the lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint luke glory to you o lord on the way to jerusalem jesus traveled along the border between samaria and galilee as he entered one of the villages ten lepers came to meet him they stood some way off and called to him jesus master take pity on us when he saw them he said go and show yourselves to the priest now as they were going away they were cleansed finding himself cured one of them turned back praising god at the top of his voice and threw himself at the feet of jesus and thanked him the man who was a samaritan this made jesus say were not all 10 made clean the other 9 where are they it seems that no one has come back to give praise to god except this foreigner and he said to the man stand up and go on your way your faith has saved you the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ please be seated praise the lord praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters today the church is celebrating the feast of saint martin of tours a bishop who lived in the 4th century in the early church and that's why and he's also the patron saint of all the beggars and that's the reason i've taken the reading from the ordinary time the reading of reading of this day is jesus cleansing the 10 lepers praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters saint martin of tours he was a roman soldier serving the emperor of rome and he was touched by the christian ideology christianity and he wanted to be converted to christianity and he was knowing about jesus listening to the preachings of the elders and continuing as a soldier in the roman army there is a story mentioned in the life history of saint martin of tours one day after his war when he was coming back to the city at the city gate he saw one beggar fully naked and nothing to cover himself and feeling so uh, full of uh, cold and he was struggling to survive the moment he saw this beggar he removed his cloak his cloak of a soldier's cloak and cut it into two pieces and gave the other cloak the one part of the cloak to this beggar and covered him then he marched forward and that day night when he was sleeping he had a dream in this dream he saw jesus covering himself with that half cloak which he had given to the beggar and jesus is covering himself and he saw him so jesus in the dream jesus was speaking to the angels and said this martin covered me today with his cloak and that i'm so grateful to him so this is the message he heard in the dream and when he got up early morning when he looked at the cloak the cloak is back to normal the the half which was missing it is no more missing it is already miraculously come back to it and this cloak became very famous in all over roman empire later even the kings used it as a relic it was kept in the holy place and then the kings used to make the oath they used to those days there was no bible to take oath because the bible has not published officially with us whole book therefore the kings in roman empire they used to make oath or ceremony by touching this cloak and this cloak was used as a relic for so many years and still used it as a relic and sometimes when the kings used to go for battle they used to carry this relic along with the soldiers uh, as a relic in the battle just like in the old testament the israelites when they went for battle they used to carry the ark of the covenant so almost similar to that they used to give veneration 
honor to these relics and there was one priest appointed uh, um, for taking care of these relics one priest was appointed just to take care of these relics and that priest is known as kapelani so so that is why uh, from kapelani from that word we have the priest who are in charge of uh, military the word chaplain 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 is came and now we have so many chaplains for different group of people different linguistic group uh, and many other groups so chaplains the word chaplain came from that and the small there was a small church like place a, a small building in which they kept this relic and this uh, church was called capella and from that word chapel the word chapel came today so there is a lot of history connected to, to saint martin of tours so my dear brothers and sisters and he is also he is also considered as the patron saint of all the beggars and that is one of the reasons i have taken this bible passage of jesus cleansing the 10 lepers lepers were considered as beggars on those days so today let us examine reflect about this bible passage one by one we read gospel of luke chapter 17 verse 11 luke chapter 17 verse 11 we read like this on the way to jerusalem jesus was going through the region between samaria and galilee so he was going through the city and through the region samaria is a gentile city and galilee is a jewish city so he was going through that place and then next one verse 12 we read like this as he entered a village 10 lepers approached him keeping their distance so 10 lepers approached him keeping their distance the two things that is mentioned here 10 lepers who are they there were people who are from samaria there were also people from galilee what does it mean there were people who were jewish and also samarit samaritans so samaritans were considered as gentile untouchables so jewish people never mingle with samaritans samari uh, the people of samaria but jewish people they thought they are high caste and samaritans are mixed race so they are considered outcast or the low grade therefore the jewish people used to look them down and therefore they never used to mingle with each other but when they got a sick uh, when uh, when they got a, a sickness they became together so the calamities and misfortunes will break down the racial discrimination this is one thing that we need to remember pandemic calamities problems crisis will break down all the racial discrimination now they are all lepers they have only one caste leprosy lepers therefore now nobody is bothered i am jew you are samaritan so don't come and touch me you are untouchable they cannot say because all of them are untouchable all of them are lepers therefore there is unity among them this 10 lepers some of them were uh, majority of them were jewish and one of them or maybe a minority was samaritan so this is how they lived my dear brothers and sisters here they had in the body they had leprosy but in their mind in their heart there was unity but the rest of the world the body they are clean but in their heart there is leprosy even today you can see the same thing bodily when we look into the body we are all clean and we seem to be very good and without any problem but inside we keep people aloof we keep bring divisions confusions there is lots of leprosy inside that can be seen and can be seen outside through our words the words that comes out of our mouth bring some kind of division confusion anger irritation because it creates there is leprosy inside may not be outside this was the difference between those days jewish people and also the latin lepers the latin lepers had leprosy outside but inside there was unity but the others who were there 
they had leprosy inside may not be seen outside praise the lord and now we read keeping their distance so why did they keeping why it is mentioned that keeping at distance because according to jewish understanding according to jewish belief all the lepers were considered untouchable unclean they are not supposed to come closer to human other human beings so they are supposed to keep a distance for example we read like this leviticus chapter 13 leviticus chapter 13 was 45 leviticus chapter 13 was 45 onwards we read like this the person who has the leprous disease leprosy shall wear torn clothes he should not wear good clothes and all but torn clothes and let the hair of his head be disheveled and he shall cover his upper lip and cry out unclean unclean so a leper who is un- unholy unclean he has to shout loudly saying unclean unclean was 46 he shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease he is unclean he shall live alone his dwelling shall be outside the camp he should be quarantined so the the idea of quarantine started from that moment from that time onwards it was god whom god himself uh, uh, started this quarantining uh, prog- uh, uh, you know that facility that program so now my dear brothers and sisters we need to remember when we read the old testament we can see so many restrictions many a time women are considered in certain time it is cons- they are considered unclean that time they are supposed to be outside the camp and somewhere in the in a, a, a lonely place sometimes even men are sub- called as unclean then they should keep aloof from the main crowd number of people and stood stay outside there are so many small small sicknesses small small uh, re- restrictions so mu- small small instructions are given to the israelites you can if you read book of leviticus you can see so many uncleanness mentioned in the bible where god is bringing quarantine for so many varieties of people you have like, like these and then you are unclean then you have to be alo- alone you have to, you have to be quarantined and so you have this sickness and therefore you are unclean and therefore you should be quarantined you have this problem therefore you have to be quarantined so so many restrictions like these in the old testament they have seen many people asking this question why did god do this partiality why is he doing like this why is he isolating people why is he dividing people so there are so many questions then we need to understand why this quarantine started on those days we need to understand that we have quarantine today and we know why this was the same reason why god also started quarantine in those days we need to understand when israel had started from their e- journey from egypt they were almost more than 600000 people 600000 men they started their journey from egypt to the promised land now they are going through the wilderness a lonely place no water no shed no where to stay no facilities they have to just walk through the wilderness and they are not one or two they are not hundred or thousands but 600000 more than 600000 men and all the women and children extra they all were traveling through that wilderness now remember just imagine if suppose so many people go together walk together for not one or two days but for months and years years not one or two years but for 40 years traveling together camping here and there like the travelers they tra- camp here and there and they stay together live together there is also all possibility of hygiene problem if they don't maintain hygiene properly there is a possibility of uh, having viruses bacteria all kind of diseases and the uh, contagious diseases it can destroy all of them it can even kill all of them 
in order to prevent them from getting into such problems god brought some rules and regulations and restrictions among them so that they may not be affected and infected by any kind of virus or bacteria which was also existing in those days too praise the lord so that was the reason why in the old testament we can see so many rules and regulation for even small small things there are so many people are considered unclean and they are set apart and quarantine for certain period of time so that until they are made clean they cannot enter into the community or society and get in touch with the others so that the others will be safe so this was a practice which was done from that time onwards praise the lord so this exactly those days they accepted it they were okay with that they they never rebelled against it though it was painful for them to isolate some of their family members just because they are sick isolate them and separate them and quarantine them for many days sometimes until their death it was painful for them but they all obeyed it just like today though it is very painful for us to be quarantined inside not able to go outside not even for walk and enjoyment entertainment we are asked to stay inside and if you go outside we have to pay the penalty so now we know it is not so easy for us but still we obey it so this is the same situation that happened in those days too praise the lord hallelujah so continue reading we read and um, uh, the gospel of luke chapter 17 was uh, 12 we read like this they uh, okay verse 13 we read like this they called out saying then they they saw jesus and keeping their distance they kept a distance from jesus because they are not allowed to go closer to the people they are supposed to keep a distance during the time of leviticus uh, written, uh, and also during the time of jesus they were supposed to keep a distance and remember it is just before he entered into the city he as he entered the village it is said verse 12 we read as he entered the village that means as he was entering into the village because these people the 10 lepers were staying outside the village they are not supposed to stay inside the village and they were staying outside the village why didn't they go far from the village because if they go far from the village they don't get any food so the villagers they used to collect some food especially the relatives and family members of these lepers they collect some food they keep it in certain place close to the village outside the village they keep these food outside and the lepers once they leave the lepers used to come and collect it so that was the reason these lepers used to stay together just outside the village they don't go far away from the village but they stay just outside the village and these are the people the lepers who were stand, staying outside the village and outside the village jesus met them and keeping their distance they cried out loudly what did they cry was 13 they cried out and said jesus master have mercy on us jesus master have mercy on us now we need to remember these are the unlucky people these are supposed to be the cursed people these are the people have no privileges rejected abandoned even god seems to be abandoning them so the moment they saw jesus they should have shouted at jesus jesus you are from god why did you all do these things to us why god did these things to us why god is so cruel they could have blamed god for all the sickness all what they are going through they could have blamed just like many people today blame god for the tragedies that is happening in their life they blame god for it because they think we are all worthy of every blessing we are worthy of every blessing how come god permitted some tragedies in our life so those who have this attitude those who think we are so precious and we are worthy of every blessing we are not supposed to be untouchables we are not supposed to be rejected we are not supposed to be abandoned we are supposed to be honored and respected but uh, still how come we are affected by some tragedies those who have such kind of feeling 
they will reject god the moment tragedy is hit to them they will deny god the moment some sickness or problems starts taking place in their life because they think highly about themselves those who think highly about themselves in the moments of tragedies they will deny god question god doubt god abandon god but those who say i am unworthy i am a sinner i am not worthy of any blessing if i am going through this sickness it is because i am not worthy to be blessed so all those who feel humbled all those who humble in humility those who have humility in their heart they will never blame god even in the tragedies in the book of job we know when job was affected by tragedies though he was very very rich well known appreciated man well accepted by all the people in the village but still one after the another when the tragedies hit his life he never denied god he said god gave me everything and god has blessed me and god has taken it away from me blessed be the name of the lord he humbled himself in front of god therefore god blessed him mightily here these 10 lepers looking at their leprosy they did not hate god they did not reject god the moment they saw jesus walking they cried out and said jesus master have mercy on me how mercy on us they didn't say heal us they didn't say if you are able to heal us please do something perform some miracle do something they didn't say that but they just said have mercy on us my dear brothers and sisters that is why you must have heard many, very often we pray here from the divine retreat center live streaming during the adoration we say jesus master have mercy on us because this is a word that came out from lepers who are humbling themselves they humbled humbled themselves and they cried out for help looking at their unworthiness not proud of themselves but humbling themselves they cried out and god heard their prayer and blessed them so if anybody has a one family if you think you are unworthy for any blessing and if you think you are not worthy to stand in front of god and if you think you are not eligible to get any blessing but only the mercy that we seek for then cry this prayer use this prayer jesus master how mercy on us the lord will bless you praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah so they cried out jesus master how mercy on us then what happened let us read verse 14 verse 14 we read like this when he saw them he said to them go and show yourselves to the priest and as they went they were made clean jesus saw these people and then he said to them be healed he did not say that he did not go and touch them he did not even go close to them he did not say anything he just said go and show yourselves to the priest what does it mean why did he ask them to go and show themselves to the priest because all those who are lepers they are not allowed to enter into the community unless they are healed how do we know they are healed when they come to know they are healed they should go and show themselves to the priest and the priest examines them once the priest is sure that they are healed then the priest will give them a clearance certificate a certificate saying you are clean you are allowed to enter into the society we read leviticus chapter 14 was 1 and 2 one onwards the lord spoke to moses saying this shall be the ritual for the leprous person at the time of his cleansing he shall be brought to the priest the priest shall go out of the camp and the priest shall make an examination if the disease is healed in the leprous person verse 4 continue 
the priest shall command that two living clean birds and cedar wood and crimson yarn and hyssop be brought for the one who is to be cleansed there should be a ceremony there should be a ceremony through the ceremony they will be declared clean the priest shall command that one of the birds be slaughtered over fresh water in an earthen vessel continue he shall take the living bird with the cedar wood and the crimson yarn and the hyssop and dip them and and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was slaughtered over the fresh water and he shall sprinkle it seven times upon the one who is to be cleansed of the leprous disease then he shall pronounce him clean and he shall let the living bird go into the open field then he will after all the ceremony the priest will pronounce him clean and only then he is declared clean and then he is allowed to enter into the community so this is the re this reason why jesus told them we read gospel of luke chapter 17 verse 14 jesus told the people go and show yourselves to the priest that means before healing them jesus told them to go before healing them jesus told them to go to meet the doc the priest now listen my dear brothers and sisters when the, the, the lepers looked at their body their body so dirty wounded pus is coming out and lots of problem and they know they are not healed but still just because jesus said they obeyed just because jesus said they obeyed in their obedience they got healed my dear brothers and sisters healing takes place not only because of the miraculous power of the word that is spoken but also because of the obedience that you show praise the lord this you have to be very careful there are many people who say father please pray for me father pray pray for me bless me pray for healing and they do ask for many intercession and prayers but at the same time they are not ready to obey the command of god the commandments that is given to you by jesus through the word of god command to be obedient to god command to be holy command to forgive your enemies command to love everyone command to pray and command to all the good things the lord has told us to do we are not ready to follow it up not ready to obey and that is why many people do not receive healing even though there are thousands who are praying even though they are attending so many live streamings even though they do kneel down and pray they are not getting healing because they forgot to obey the word of god praise the lord here you can see jesus told them go and show yourself to the priest they could have looked at jesus and said jesus how can we go to the priest now we are not healed we are unclean if we go to the priest now the priest will chase us out first you clean us then we will go they could have argued like this but jesus said go yourselves to the priest go yourselves to the priest go and show yourselves to the priest and they did not question anything they blindly obeyed what jesus said my dear brothers and sisters many time people ask for prayers we give them word of god to repeat saying repeat it 25 times for one week or one month or uh, repeat these word these words sometimes some people say father i have read this many times some people say why should we say 25 times maybe i will say one time some people say for one or two days and after that just give up my dear brothers and sisters any instruction which god gives you in any way if it is you know if sometimes we feel it is silly and funny but just obey it you will see the miracle sometimes our reason cannot understand it what is the meaning in repeating this prayer what is the meaning in doing fasting what is the meaning in, what is the connection between my sickness and going for confession confession is my spiritual aspect but sickness is my physical aspect what is that connection we won't understand anything because our reason cannot understand these lepers could have said what is the connection first you you heal us then we will go 
But before healing, why should we go and show ourselves to the priest? Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, just believe you will see the glory of God. Putting on new man even when we still look and feel like old man. We have to put on new man even when we still look like and feel like old man. This should be our attitude when we come closer to God. Believe God has forgiven you. Believe some people even after the confession. Though in the confessional the priest has forgiven them in their father and their son of the Holy Spirit all their sins but still after the confession they go around as if they are still carrying big burdens of their sins. They don't believe that they are forgiven. Though God has already told them believe. Your sins are washed away. Believe. Praise the Lord. So this belief is very important. If God says something it will happen. So believe. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Let us read Matthew chapter 8 verse 13. Matthew 8 13. And to the centurion. Jesus said go. Let it be done for you. According to your faith. As you believe. It will be done to you. Jesus said. Matthew 9 29. Matthew 9 29. Let's read. We read like this. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. According to your faith, the importance of your faith. Your faith is very important. Matthew 21 verse 22. Matthew 21 22. Whatever you ask for in prayer, with faith, you will receive. Whatever you ask for in prayer, with faith, you will receive. Mark 11.24 Mark 11.24 We read So I tell you Whatever you ask for in prayer Believe that you have already received it It will be yours Praise the Lord Already received it How do we believe as if we have already received That is why the best prayer is thanksgiving prayer Suppose you are praying for your husband who is addicted to alcohol. You are instead of praying to God. God please deliver my husband from alcohol. Thank God like this. Lord thank you for delivering my husband from alcohol. Even before he is delivered from the alcohol. Start thanking God for delivering him from the alcohol. Praise the Lord. The same way. I tell you whatever you ask for in prayer. Believe that you have received it. And it will be yours. Praise the Lord. That is why your prayer, your belief, your obedience is very much important for God when it, when it comes to healing. We read Matthew chapter 9 verse 28 and 29. Matthew 9, 28 and 29. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. Do you believe that I am able to do this? My dear brothers and sisters, all those who are attending this live streaming, do you think you are just trying your luck? Are you just trying your chance? Or are you 100% sure that the Lord Jesus is able to do everything in your life? The Lord is asking this question to you and me. Do you believe that Jesus is able to do this for you? Do you believe that Jesus is able to raise you from your bed? Do you believe that Jesus is able to pay off all the debts which is impossible for you to pay the debt? Do you believe this? If you say yes, just believe it. It will be done to you. Just start thanking God as if it is already done. Just thank God and start believing. Start moving. If you are bowing down, if you are lying down, bedridden, not able to move, believe that God has healed you and get up. You will see the miracle. Just like Jesus told the lepers, go and show yourselves to the priest. They went, they got healed. In the process of obedience, they got healed. 
Jesus told the man who was with their hand, stretch out, stretch out. Then he stretched out. He could have said, no, I can't stretch out. I can't stretch out. He could have said that. But he tried. Then it happened. The paralyzed man who, who was lying down on the shore of Bethsaida pool. He was lying down for 38 year, long years. He is paralyzed. What did Jesus say? You are healed. No, he didn't say that. He said, get up, take your mat and got everything and go. Then he could have said, Jesus first, how can I get up? I am paralyzed. He didn't argue. He just tried, it happened. You try, it will happen. Believe in Jesus. Do you believe that Jesus can do this? And then do it. Start doing it. It will happen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. This is the secret of healing that Jesus always do. He knew that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. If you believe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Hebrew chapter 10 verse 19. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 19. We read. Therefore my friends. Since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus. We have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus. Verse 22. Let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Through the blood of Jesus. Now we have full assurance of faith. With our hearts sprinkled clean from, from any on evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us approach the holy place because we have 100% assurance through the precious blood of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20, we read like this. For in him, Every one of God's promises. There are so many thousands of promises in the Bible. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. You are precious to me. Your names are written on my palm. Your mother you may forget. Father may forget. But I will not forget you. I will be following you. Wherever you go. I am with you wherever you go. There are so many things. So many protections. So many deliverance. So many healing promises written in the Bible. So many promises. About prosperity, healing, protection, deliverance, everything. And now Bible says, For in him, in Jesus, every one of God's promises is a yes. For all the promises in the Bible, in Jesus Christ, the answer is yes. The moment you accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, all the promises is yes in your life. That means all the promises will be fulfilled in your life. For this reason, it is through him that we say the Amen to the glory of God. That means if you accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, if you reject and renounce every sin and sa Satan, hold on to Jesus and accept him as the Lord and Savior, then you are saying Amen to all the blessings. You are saying yes to all the healings and miracles and wonders. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Therefore, this point, please do remember that we just believe the miracle will happen. We read a very important passage from the Bible that is 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 9 onwards. A person called Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. He is a, Senju, he is a leader, commander-in-chief and uh, he is a pagan. I mean, he is a Gentile and he was a leper. Though he was a commander-in-chief, unfortunately he got leprosy and he needed healing. For the leprosy, there was no healing available. The only thing is, the powerful God of Israel is able to heal them. That's all. So he came to Israel. Somebody said there is a prophet Elisha. He is staying there. So he came to Elisha's house. And verse 10. Elisha sent a messenger to him. Saying. Go wash in the Jordan seven times. And your flesh shall be restored. And you shall be clean. Now. Now. He is coming from his, his 
country and now Elisha is in Israel the rivers of Israel the most beautiful one is in Jordan and Jordan's water is known for its unclean water it's not so good water it's a dirty water even today if you go to Jordan the water is not so clean but it's only clean certain times so the Jordan water was not considered as so clean so Elisha sent a messenger Elisha did not go himself he sent only a messenger but who is Naaman who is Naaman is a commander-in-chief very important reputed man he has so many followers so many soldiers are with him and he is collecting lots of gifts and fruits got uh, gold and silver so many so many things wealth to provide to give it to the Elisha he is giving as a royal king but Elisha did not even bother about him and Elisha he sent only a messenger and said go and wash in the Jordan River seven times not one time not two times but seven times in the dirty water then Naaman got you know rejected he was insulted let's read verse 11 but Naaman became angry he and went away saying I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would have would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy I expected a miraculous healing I expected a miraculous healing I thought for me he says for me because he always exalted himself he knew he's somebody high high rank official so he high you know he lifted himself high he exalted himself my dear brothers and sisters it shows leprosy is not only in his body but also in his heart so he was exalting himself and that is why he got offended those who exalt themselves when God asked them to do small small things they may not agree with it that is why many people cannot accept the Holy Eucharist they cannot believe the Almighty God comes in the form of bread they can't believe it because it is too too uh, uh, incomprehensible for them they cannot adjust they cannot accept it because they are using their intellect so much my dear brothers and sisters that's why some people cannot even con accept confession just go and confess your sins the priest absolves your sins or your sins are forgiven can't believe many people cannot accept and this man he exalted himself and he could not believe that this small instruction just go and take bath seven times in the dirty water will be okay he could not believe this he could not accept it he was expecting something miraculous spectacular and that does, did not happen verse 12 we read like this are not Abana and Parpar the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel could I not wash in them and be clean he turned and went away in a rage he was so angry he said Abana and Parfar the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel why should I take bath in this dirty water I will go and take bath in my country in my river so he was so angry then verse 13 but his servants he had so many servants they approached and said to him father if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult would you not have done it how much more when all he said to you was wash and be clean see sometimes the message and wisdom may come from ordinary people some people they only obey when their higher superiors speak to them they say let my superior speak to me I will obey let Pope Francis come and speak to me I will obey let Prime Minister announce then I will obey they cannot accept if someone their colleague maybe some subordinate tell them to do something they cannot accept it who are you but the God's wisdom may come through anyone I have seen the same thing everywhere in the parishes retreat centers everywhere people they say let the priest come and tell me then I will obey who are you to dictate terms to me I don't want anyone to dictate terms to me let them come and tell me when we exalt ourselves 
then we will be put down when we exalt ourselves that is a clear sign that intellect and reasoning is too active than the spiritual power praise the lord so he was not ready to accept but ordinary people his servants understood this is it this is the message of god they were ready to accept and they came and told this man naman he only asked the small thing he didn't ask anything difficult why don't you do that then first fourteen just because of his relationship with these servants he went down and immersed himself seven times in the jordan according to the word of the man of god his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy and he was clean in this dirty water god made him so clean my dear brothers and sisters the material the matter that we use may not be so good but god can do perform miracles with even by unclean thing to make you clean that is why the catholic church believes if, if a priest even if he has not done his proper confession just because he is a priest if he takes the bread and make it consecrate it it will become the eucharist the same way even if a priest is a sinner even if he sits in the confession and say i absolve you your sins in the name of the father and of the son and the holy spirit your sins will be forgiven god can use even unclean things to make you clean praise the lord a hallelujah verse 15 then he returned to the man of god and he all his company he came and stood before him and said now i know that there is no god in all the earth except in israel please accept a present from your servant praise the lord my dear brothers and sisters this is why we just need to believe right now the lord is healing somebody who has got pain in the right leg knee pain and swelling on your knees and some re a knee replacement the lord is healing you right now praise the lord a hallelujah we read isaiah 55 verse 11 isaiah 55 verse 11 we read like this isaiah 55 verse 11 so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth it shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which i purpose and succeed in the thing for which i send it so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth it shall not return to me empty it shall accomplish that which i purpose if god tells you something it will happen now you may say father god doesn't come in front of me and tell me if god jesus come appear in front of me and tell me to do something i will do it my dear brothers and sisters god has already spoken to you through the bible and he's speaking to you through the bible every day and now you doesn't need to come again everything what he has to say he has already said it now just open it and read it repeat it believe it and follow it you will see the miracle so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth it shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which i purpose and succeed in the thing for which i send it praise the lord a hallelujah thank you jesus let us read continue reading gospel of luke chapter 17 verse 15 then one of them when he saw that he was healed turned back praising god with a loud voice now when he asked for healing he prayed cried loud voice jesus master have mercy on me now when he is thanking he is also thanking god with a loud voice do we have the same sincerity and commitment when we were asking for a blessing do we have the same sincerity and commitment and the same energy when we come to thank god for the blessing we already received this we need to re remember there are many people before they get a visa to go to abroad and get work before they get a job they kneel down and pray they cry out and pray they raise their voice and pray they praise god and pray but after they get a blessing after they get a healing after they get a job after they get a, uh, a visa to go abroad how do they thank god is an examination of conscience that we need to ask do we have the same loud voice 
the same commitment, the same sincerity to thank God? Or have you forgotten him? Praise the Lord. This is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. That is why verse 16 says, Then Jesus asked, He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet. This man prostrated, thanked Jesus, and he was a Samaritan. He is written, he is a Gentile. His own people, Jesus' people, the people whom God has chosen, they are, reject, they are not ready to accept Jesus. Gentiles. Verse 17. We read, Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Verse 18. Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Now remember, all of them are going to the temple to see the priest. They are going to the priest, to the temple. They could have thanked there in the temple. But this man knew Jesus is God. Jesus is the one who healed me. Jesus should be thanked means God is thanked. Therefore he came back and Jesus says, Was none of them found to return and give praise to God? Now, when this man was bowing down, prostrating in front of Jesus and touching the feet of Jesus and praising and thanking Jesus, what did Jesus call this action? He is praising God. That means, thanking Jesus, thanking God. Praise the Lord. Jesus knew and he was, directly he was telling the whole world that he is God. Praise the Lord. Give praise to God, accept this foreigner. My dear brothers and sisters, this word is echoing even today. For everything that we do, this word is repeatedly asked in front of each and every one of us. Jesus is asking the same question every day repeatedly. Was none of them found to return and give praise to God, accept this foreigner? Where are these people whom I blessed? Where are these people whom I healed? There are people, so many people who received healing, miracles, wonders through these live streaming. Where are they? After they received healing and deliverance, they stopped watching. They went after their business and they are not bothered about all these spiritual activities. But until they received the healing, how much they cried and prayed. Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner. This word repeatedly being echoed every day in our life. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, let's close our eyes and ask forgiveness from God for all those moments where we have forgotten God. When we were in sickness and problem, we cried out to God. When we received healing, we forgot God. Let's ask forgiveness from God for these.